Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Camp of the Lint, and I'm here with another quick one to show you guys. If you remember, I did a video on a game called Warp's Edge a couple weeks back. Really liked it. A um, chit, drawing, chit drawing type game where you have your little spaceship and you're trying to take out enemy motherships and little baby ships and all that type stuff. Real cool game. Definitely check out the video if you haven't seen it. But in the process of doing that, I discovered that it was part of a series called the Solo Heroes series. And there was another one in it. And I liked that one so much, I decided to give this one a try. This is Proving Grounds. It's by the same uh, game company, Renegade Game Studios, part of their Solo Hero series. As far as I know, there's only the two games in the series, Warp's Edge and this one, Proving Grounds. And this one is by Kane Clinko. Hope I'm saying that one correctly. Uh, you can tell this is not a space opera like the other one was. This is more gladiatorial combat. And a neat aspect of this game is just like the other one, it comes with a little storybook. So you can read it and know the little story behind the game. I'm not going to read it to you. That way, if you get it, you can be surprised by it and know all the good stuff. But uh, good versus evil, but all that good stuff, right? So trying to win in your gladiatorial type combat. Now, this one has completely different mechanics. You'll notice there's a different player board. There's dice in this, which the game revolves all around uh, the dice, which was very much different from the other type of game. Now, you also do not have multiple choices in this. This is your character. This is who you're playing as. You don't have like extra gladiators or anyone else to pick from. This is who you're always going to be. The enemies can be different. And they did include a module system for the game. Now, what I'm going to demonstrate for you here is just going to be the, the basic, the training uh, scenario type for the game. But there's multiple different modules for it. So on your little summary card here, round sequence, like the fact that they have this. I always love it when games have a sequence of play somewhere that's easily accessible, like a card, uh, letting you know everything you need to do. Uh, the front side does tell us our round sequence, but the back side goes into the modules that can come into the game. And think of the modules as ramping up the difficulty is a, a way to look at it. It adds uh, variables to it. Like instead of just straight gladiatorial combat, there could be chariots involved, or the enemies could get shield, or you get a special uh, dragon die that can affect things that can uh, hurt you or help you, depends on what you roll. Or there's even a sun and moon that uh, come into play. There are some extra components involved with that. The uh, little dragon token here, shields, the sun and moon, and then there are extra cards as well that you guys won't see a whole lot of during this, because like I said, we're just doing the training scenario that can also be added into the game. There's a couple extra decks that get involved. These are like the chariot cards here. So cool stuff, but understand what I'm showing you guys is the basic, right? So this is like the starting training scenario, but you can ramp it up as much as you want to. All right, so what's our purpose, right? Our purpose is to, to win. Now, to win, you got to beat eight opponents. And if you see around here, we've got six-sided dice and we've got six sides, right? One, two, three, four, five, and six around here. That's where the enemy cards are going to be placed. And to defeat them, you need to make sets of dice. And a set of dice is multiple numbers. So these are the dice that I start with one of each of these special colors, and then five whites. This is our exhaustion track over here. We get extra dice back from that, but when we take wounds, we lose dice to it. It's all back and forth thing. And then later on, as you take wounds, you can get extra colored dice to make you stronger as you're dying. <laughs> In essence, it'll give you a chance to win. But when we roll our dice, if you roll them, let's just say, I rolled this and we'll, Flick these around here. Goes a one, a four, and a, where's a two? Here we go. All right, let's say, just as an example, this is my roll, and I'll zoom in a little bit on camera so you guys can see this. Well, if this is when the timer stops, now when I 
start showing you guys, I'm probably not gonna be too focused on the time since I'm gonna be explaining what I'm doing, but you're gonna have one minute each time you're you're doing your round of combat, okay? So you can keep rolling, pushing your luck as long as you have time left on that one minute. Once one minute is up, there's an app you can use or any one minute timer, that's when you gotta stop. You'll take and organize your dice by their sets. Sets are the same number. So we've got a couple of sixes, we've got three threes, but then we've got a one, a four, and a two as singles, all right? Singles are bad. Think of singles as hits from the enemy against you and sets as hits from you against the enemy. But with these being numbered, you place whatever you place next to those numbers. So this set of threes will go against the enemy in the three slot. Set of sixes will go against the enemy in this uh, six slot and then the rest go in their respective locations. So this would be our basic setup. If I had the enemies there, this is where those dice would go. And you need to make a certain amount of sets. So let's grab a enemy from the bottom here, since I've already got the deck shuffled up. You're gonna have a marker on their starting spot, which unfortunately this guy is one spot away from striking you. And some of them do have special abilities like this queen's bodyguard here. Green dice count as two dice each against this enemy, which is actually a bonus, that's good. You see where it says three plus? That means you need three dice in that set. So if she were in this six slot, you wouldn't be able to hit her because we only have two sixes. So we can't uh, beat her there. But if she were placed here instead, when we go around as we're doing our combat, this would be moved up. So that's essentially a strike against her. And once we get this marker all the way to the top, then that guard, whoever we're fighting, has been defeated. If it ever drops down to the bottom, where it's got the little red symbol, that means you've taken a hit and your health marker goes down. So you wanna be very careful on where you place your die. And that's where the pushing your luck aspect comes into it because when you are rolling these dice, all right, so let's bring our little stuff back over here, saying this is what we rolled on our first roll. Well, you can only re-roll your sets. That's where this game gets a little funky. You're thinking, okay, well, I'm doing good on threes and sixes, so I'll just pick up these singles and re-roll them. You can't do that. You can only choose to re-roll your sets. Now, if you roll again and create a new set, then you can uh, re-roll that set. Basically, as long as you have more than one of a die, you can re-roll it. But if you only have a single, you can't. And you can continue to do that as much as you want, changing things around until that minute is up, all right? That's the, the basic gist of the game. So let's set ourselves up a little starter scenario here, and I'll show you guys the game in action for a round and let you guys see how it plays out. So we'll start by drawing our enemies. First one is gonna go here, and we've got a warrior in training. Now there are symbols up here and to the left. This has to do with um, uh, that dragon die that I was telling you about, one of the modules. We don't have to worry about that in our training scenario. See, it only takes a couple of hits to kill this one, but one of the problems is you have to have a blue or a green die. That's what that symbol means. If there's a color there, you have to have one of those colors. So to defeat uh, him, I want to say, uh, you would need to have one of these dice be part of the set in that attack. Mm. Now you can go up twice. So let's say he's in ones. Let's put this one on one, put this one on a one and grab a couple of our singles here. Our whites, if I can find the one and another one. Okay, let's say we had four ones and we had a green and a blue located there. This would be enough to kill him if he were located there. So we could put two towards the first hit and two towards the second hit and take him out. So you can do more than one hit against a single enemy in a single round. All right, so this is the first one we drew. We'll place this one here. 
We will draw ourselves another one, place them on two. Uh, looks like a little bit harder to defeat. Takes two dice, so two dice in the set. And since we're placing it in two, we need two twos and then three twos, and then two twos that includes a green, and then three twos to defeat this queen's bodyguard. That sucks, that's gonna take a lot. Uh, next one, and this one has a special ability. Blue and yellow dice count as two dice against uh, each against this enemy. This is good stuff. So this four plus here can be reduced if we use blue or yellow dice. Good stuff. All right, so put that one there. Put this one here. We got another enemy, another queen's bodyguard. Can you tell who the bad guy is in this game? Uh, Sun Queen representative, another one that's requiring some yellow dice. And our last one is another warrior in training, not too bad. Uh, green and yellow dice are ignored uh, use, well, ignored when used in sets against this enemy. That's bad, so we don't want to use green or yellows because they can't be used to defeat this one. Blues can, but not those two colors. Now, the one thing that I haven't mentioned just yet, and I know you guys are thinking, all right, well, Gimpy, you're, you're going to get killed real quick because... What about the others? There's no way you can defeat six in a, in a single round. You are correct. But the only ones that will hit you are the ones that you have put dice towards. Okay? So if we put dice towards six and two and four, but we don't put any dice against one, three, and five, one, three, and five are ignored for this round. All right? Completely. The only enemies that have a potential to die and or hit you during a round are the enemies that you put dice on. So that does reduce the amount of uh, hits you have coming at you. All right, so we got ourselves set up. Let's move our little enemy deck out of the way here. I got my phone sitting to the side, so I'll uh, peek at it here in a sec to kind of let myself not go too... Uh, actually, I can look at my video camera to see... Uh, how much time, but like I said, since I'm going to explain it, I'll probably take a couple of minutes just uh, as I'm going along so you guys understand my thought processes and why I'm doing the things I'm doing. Oh, and before I forget, I got to put our cute little wooden markers on them. Each of them go on the starting square, which is outlined in gray and does not have any numbers or anything on it. it looks like all of them start one hit away. So you don't want to put a single against any of these guys. But like I said, you do get bonuses if you do lose a little bit of health. Now, you don't get all three of these dice right off the bat. But what does happen is you can pick one to keep. The other two move down. And then if you get hit again, you pick another. The last one goes down and so on. So you can gradually increase it to when you're on your last health. You have all three of these extra dice to use of the colored one, so it'll help you uh, attack the enemies that much harder. Okay, so we're gonna get started here, and I will grab up all the dice. You guys, forgive me, it will sound loud. Uh, for this game, I would definitely recommend not using a dice tower. Either just roll it here on the table like I'm gonna do, or have yourself a dice tray, whatever you choose to do. But since you're gonna be picking them up and moving them around so much, I wouldn't use a dice tower because you're gonna just waste your time plunking them through like uh, Plinko from, um, that uh, Bob Barker show. Price is right. Yeah. <laughs> Having a brain fart. All right, here we go. All right, so first roll, I've got a couple of sixes. I've got a three fives, a two, and a one, and a three. Now, when we're looking at this, I can see with six, these two sixes will are enough to do a damage against her, him. <laughs> the guard's kind of androgynous. I can't tell with these warriors in uh, training. Uh, the three fives are enough to do a damage against them. But that leaves me with three singles. So I know I will take three damage right off the bat if I do this. And I kind of don't want to do that. So I'm going to pick up my fives and I'm going to reroll my fives. I'm going to keep my sixes here, though, because I... Uh, no, damn. Uh, instead, I'm going to keep my fives. I forgot that one's got a special ability that uh, green dice are ignored and there's a green there. So, and this is why I'm saying I am going to take a little extra time when explaining this because it takes a little while to talk through. Uh, I'm going to keep my fives instead because I can do a damage there. And instead, I'll reroll my sixes and see if I can make some sets 
uh, towards some of these other ones since this six can't be hit by this green die. So we'll re-roll these two. And I got a two and a four. So with that, I was hoping to at least hit another three. I could be doing another damage there. All right, so that's not too bad. And officially I'm already out of time. Uh, do I want to push it? Yeah, yeah, we'll push it one more time. I'm keeping my five, so I'll roll this one more time, see if I make a better set. I got another green five, but that's not going to do me any good, and a six. Now, unfortunately here, I screwed myself, because now that I've hit this five, I can't really keep it, because... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, I don't have enough to do two damage and then I've got four singles coming at me. So I've got to reroll all of these to see if I get something better going on here. All right, two, two, five, three. So I got two. Good God, I've still got four of those. All right, let's try this one more time. See if I can limit it down just to three singles on the board. And here we go, three fours. And I am going to say that I'm out of time because I have pushed it kind of far here. We've got a couple of sixes and we've got a one, a three, and a five. Unfortunately, I pushed a little too hard and ended up biting myself in the butt. So we will start at our lowest numbers and walk this around. One is going to be applied here. Our next lowest is a three. It'll be applied here. Our five, which was going to be a hit, but is now no longer a hit, is going to be applied there. Our six is going to be applied here. Our uh, two sixes are going to be applied there, and I missed my fours. They're going to be applied here. All right, so the only one we actually didn't attack was two. I was wanting to get that down a little bit lower, and this is where the, uh, the push your luck aspect comes to it. I had been in a better place, but because I pushed and I ended up making a different set, it threw things off. If you could just re-roll your singles in this game, you could crush it. You'd win almost every round because you would just keep rolling until you hit uh, one or two sets and just blast one person down and never attack the others. That's why this game is designed around re-rolling your sets because that's your hit. That's your damage, and you have to decide, okay, should I, do I have too many singles out there? Am I going to be taking too many hits? Yeah, that's a problem. Okay. All right, so here's the thing. I am going to be taking some damage, and it does let you know how to resolve the attacks and when you take a wound. Now, when you take a wound, you have to exhaust the die. One of your dice that you're using gets added to this track and lose one health and then you reset the battle marker. So I know I'm going to be taking a hit here. We'll pull this one to the side. Nothing's gonna happen there. Here we're also going to be taking a hit. Pull that one to the side. Now you don't have to exhaust that die. You mainly are gonna exhaust your white dice because your uh, colored dice are better. Uh, here I am actually moving this one up. So cool, no damage for my fours. I was able to damage this person, but now I've got to have greens and blues in there. Five is also going to be a hit. So I got three hits and this one, these two, no yellows uh, are ignored uh, when used in sets against this enemy. So this is actually going to be another hit. I got myself crushed because I uh, missed the yellow on that one. Yeah, I should have uh, should have stopped when I was ahead. I only taken three damage. Unfortunately, I, I, ooh, I got hit bad on the start of this one. So I've got one, two, three, four. I'm already down here, but I get to take two of these dice. I will take the green and the blue, but I have to exhaust, uh, I think it's four dice. Yep, I have to exhaust four dice, but I am getting one dice back. So I'm just gonna leave this as such because at the end of a round, this all moves down one, all right? So when it moved down, it came to there and the others get added in. So effectively, I just got one dice back. That was a horrible round for me. But you see, because of this, right? Because when I hit here, I got one die. When there, I got to pick another die. And here, actually, I should have all three of these because I am to here. I pick one there, I pick one there, and I pick one here. Okay, yeah. So I do have those dice, but I am down to two health, which sucks. 
<laughs> that's horrible. But it is what it is. The four dice from my hit, from my hits, right, came around to me. Every time you account for the hit, you move the marker back up to its starting position, right? And there we go. We're set back for the next round now. Unfortunately, I did not do good on this first round. And the only one that I actually was able to move up with uh, was this lower card down here. Uh, it is up by one. If I move it up a couple more, this card will be taken out. Now, here's the thing, though. This can go back and forth. So let's just say I had gotten this one to here and I ended up putting a single on it it gets moved back down. So it can go in multiple directions. You wanna to try to keep track of that. If you're one hit away from taking an, uh, an enemy out, you don't want to apply a single to that card at any cost. You wanna hold back and try to do whatever you can to eliminate that. Because remember, to win this game, it's defeating eight enemies. Doesn't matter which eight enemies, you don't have to clear it, all right? To, uh, to take them out and then reload it again. What you do is each time an enemy is taken out, you're gonna replace them with another card from the deck. So you'll always have six enemies against you as you're going through with this. Big thing for me is I definitely wanna survive at least a couple more rounds because if I can survive a couple more rounds, I get this huge stack of dice added back into it because each round that goes by, I get more dice added to it. But the big thing for this one is, is pushing your luck and trying not to have too many of those singles. And it comes down to that timing because you have one minute to make your choices, right? Now, I gave myself two minutes when I was doing this, but again, I'm explaining it. But the big thing is, do you risk that ready-made set that you have already got that you've got a guaranteed hit on for the chance, the potential for something greater? And that's it. That's the, the basics of the game. But... To show you guys a little bit more, the stuff that changes us up, there is another special die I mentioned, the Draggingling die that comes into play and it changes things up fairly dramatically. Now, I wish they had this on a card, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, if you roll talon, uh, bah, talon, tail, or teeth, the result may be added to any set or single or single to attack an enemy card with the matching icon. So those icons that I was pointing out on there, that's where this dice comes into it. However, the Draggingling die does not count as a colored die. So for the colored die purposes, you can't use it for that. If you get a wing result, it may be used to prevent the battle marker from moving down for any one single. However, the wing result does not prevent a uh, situation that would cause an enemy to raise their shield. Shield is a different module. We'll touch on that in a sec. And the chaos result must be used to immediately re-roll all colored dice before, uh, before resolving any attacks. This is mandatory. That is huge. That's the uh, symbol right there. So the dragging lean die alone throws everything into chaos. Just that one die. And that's one module. You also have the aspect with chariots that get added to the game, which, like I said, add a whole new deck of cards that can change up the way that the battles are going to be played. There's what's called inspiration powers, which again, change aspects. We see one of the inspiration cards you get, and some of the inspiration cards are module specific. So if you're not playing with certain modules, cause you can pick and choose, you can add one or all modules to the game. This one as an inspiration card, the tail result of the Draggingling die can be used against any enemy instead of just the enemies with that um, symbol up in their upper left corner. So that changes things up. And then, like I said, there is the shield uh, aspect to it. And that has to do with enemies attacking enemies with a set. But if you don't attack them with the correct combination, then the enemy is going to raise their shield and they get a shield token placed on them. And now they're shielded against uh, your future attacks until you break through their shield. That definitely makes things much harder. Then you also have the aspect of conspirators. That's a, like I said, another different uh, card deck that can be added to it. And they'll be revealed as you defeat enemies and you'll roll dice. And if you 
roll, uh, you have to roll a dice before you actually start your timer and start your actual dice rolling. And if you roll a die that matches one of their numbers, then their power, whatever it is, gets added to the effect uh, for that round. As an example, this one is choose an enemy and move their uh, battle marker down one space. Not a good thing to have it happen. Most of these uh, do crank up the difficulty just a little bit. And the last aspect of this one, uh, or I think it is the last module, isn't it? Yeah, last module to it is called the sun and the moon. And that's basically the direction that our heroine here is facing. And that's where this token comes into play. And that will actually be turned around. So you can get a bonus against enemies that are directly in front of you. But if you don't attack the ones that are behind you, you can end up receiving even more wounds. So as you guys can see from this game, there's uh, the basic rules, right? The basic rules to the game are very simple to understand. You can pick it up in just a matter of minutes and be playing, right? And you can burn through a round relatively quickly. I do like the fact that they understood that and they added the modules to the game so you could decide for yourself how easy and difficult you wanted to be. Because if they didn't have the modules to this, right, uh, after you've played it a handful of times, you'll have a decent strategy. And then the rest of the game is just down to random luck with dice. Then by adding the modules, you actually have some strategy, especially with things like the dragon die you're facing. The conspirators can throw uh, more chaos into it making even uh, more choices as far as whether or not your attack is spot on, because if it's not spot on, the enemy might raise their shield. And then you have uh, inspiration cards to help you out or chariots to run you down. So all in all, cool game uh, components. Great. I love the little wooden tokens. The cardboard pieces are all nice and thick. Dice are nice and weighty. The game isn't overly expensive. I want to say it's 20, 25, roughly somewhere around there. It's definitely not an expensive game. Uh, small footprint, uh, small footprint. So easily portable if you need to take it on a trip or something like that. And with it being a solo game, you don't have to worry about having anyone there with you to play it. You can just pop it out whenever you feel up to it. It really comes down to you on whether or not you like your push your uh, push your luck type dice games. If you do, this one's definitely going to be up your alley. Me, I like the game, but I was probably spoiled by Warp's Edge. I like that one a little more. And I think that comes down more to theme. I like the space theme and lasers and shields a little bit more than I like the, uh, the shields, these types of shields and swords and all that good stuff. And the, the chip drawing mechanic, building your bag between warps in that game, just appeal to me more. So if you're a more into dice, then this one would probably be the one to go for. If you're more into chits and uh, filling your chip bag and doing that stuff, Warp's Edge would be one to go for. But you're not exactly going wrong with either one of the game modules. Gotta say, I've enjoyed what they put out thus far. I think it's a, a neat solo hero series that they're doing. I like the thing that they put the, uh, the little stories in there. So you can read that if you're interested in that. Uh, I'm interested to see what else they're able to come up with. Definitely unique aspects, uh, unique gaming concepts that they're going with. It's not like any of their concepts, you know, rolling dice and, and pushing your luck is brand new or anything. But the way they've incorporated it, I like that. Filling up a chip bag and attacking enemies with it and making those choices. It's not brand new by any means, but they've done uh, very well with it. So I'm interested to see what they try next. I'm hoping that it's not chits or dice if they come up with something else. Uh, maybe some type of card variant. We'll just have to see. But that's going to be it for this one. Uh, feel free to put your comments, questions, concerns, all that good stuff down below. You guys take care. I'll see you in the next one.